Kurt Blattenberger with the AirplanesAndRockets.com website and we're back on the third installment on the series showing how to cover an airplane with a silk span and dope finish or silk span and tissue. And I want to back up just for a second and talk about uh, the safety aspect and that is of making sure that you do this in a well ventilated area. I'm just in a bedroom with openable windows and the smell isn't going to be too great or overwhelming just doing this little bit because the surface area of the container is fairly small so there's not a lot of surface to evaporate and we'll be doing not, not very much just doing the attachment of the silk span to the frame but when it comes time to doing the full coats where there's going to be huge open areas of evaporating uh, volatiles from the dope I'll take that downstairs into the basement and do it. It's just that this is a, a nicer environment up here and there's better lighting. The other thing is on the last video we were talking about when doing sealing the edges along the, the freshly applied silk span and uh, getting them sealed down so that the, the successive coats can be applied over top. And I was showing just dipping my finger in the water and, and uh, wetting the silk span first and then putting the dope on because it makes it more supple. I also will use a brush to get into areas like up in here around where the uh, and down where the um, all, all the tight corners are that I can't get my finger because I don't want to just be slopping water all over the place. Uh, you got to be careful though because you've got two brushes going at the same time, one with water, one with dope and it's easy to uh, suffer from a uh, uh, just a mental relapse there and accidentally pick up your water brush and dip it in the open dope container and then you got to go take time to clean it off with some MEK and start over again and at the same time feel stupid for having done it not once but probably multiple times because I still do that. Um, also backing up to the different dopes again real quick nitrate versus butyrate and most people watching this probably already know but just in case that you can apply butyrate dope over type of, top of nitrate and have no reactive problems, but if you put nitrate over top of butyrate, it will cause it to bubble up and completely destroy the finish. And it doesn't matter whether you put it on lightly or heavily, it's going to destroy it. So that's why it's safe to, to go in the order of putting nitrate on first and then butyrate. And aside from the fact that there's really never any reason to put nitrate over butyrate, just don't do it by mistake or you will regret it. All right, we're going to start this time with putting some silk span on. I'm going to cover this wing tip right here on the bottom. I want to keep doing the bottom first and then we'll wrap around the top like I was talking about. But a couple things about the silk span that you'll read is now this happens to be uh, SIG medium weight silk span. You can get it from K&S and there are probably other suppliers, I'm not sure. But one of the things you want to watch for when cutting your pieces is you like to keep the grain of the silk span, if it has a, a detectable grain, going in the long direction because it helps when it, to keep it from sagging later on. And the simplest way to test for the grain is just to grab a test piece and just start pulling down. If it tears and continues to move pretty much in that same direction, then you can be pretty sure the grain is in that direction. If we turn it the other way and you start tearing, and as you tear you see that start to walk off, then that's another indication that in this case the grain is in this direction. Now on the full roll of silk span that happens to be across the short dimension of the silk span rather than along the long piece, but that's just the way SIG happens to do it for the medium silk span. It may be different, but it's so easy to test that you may as well do it so that when you're planning your pieces for cutting them out, you always know that you're, you have the, the grain in the right direction. The other aspect is you'll read about checking to see if there's one side of the silk span that's shinier than the other. And the reason being that the shiny side will generally take less dope to fill to make it smooth, so you'd like to put that on the outside. Now I've checked these over, these are the two wingtip pieces, and if there is a difference, you can tell by looking in the light, you look at the glare and just compare the shininess one piece to the other. And if there's a difference, it will be 
pretty obvious. This, I can't really see that there's uh, one side is shinier than the other. So if it's that non-obvious, then it probably doesn't matter. Another thing you can do if you want to double check yourself is, I just use a cheap little plastic jeweler's eye loop. You can buy them for a dollar or so. And if you just look at the surface under some light and just check both sides, you, you can see in instances where one side is shinier than the other. Like on Japanese tissue, uh, it's pretty obvious on there what's the shiny side and what's the non-shiny side. And if you look at it under a little bit of magnification, you can tell the difference. But again, I'm not going to have to worry about it because there is no obvious difference on the sides. So in order to do, I've, I've chosen the, the, the bottom of the upper left wing. Probably should have chosen the other side. Well, I can turn it like this. The, the top wing on a camel biplane is straight. There's no uh, dihedral to it, so that makes it really uh, handy for putting on the surface and laying upside down. You don't have to worry about it. I, I block it up here just to keep it more level. It would be nice to have a bigger work surface for doing this, but I don't. All right, what I do then is I'll just take a, a little spray bottle and try not to spray anything. Now, the, both the tissue and the silk span has a habit of liking to fold over onto itself if you're not careful. I usually spray the top a little more heavily because as it's hanging, the water's going to tend to pool up on the bottom of it. And I'll just attach it to a surface like this for now. Um, I should have shown you before, but I've already pre-notched here for where the struts are going to be. I could do it after the fact because it'll, it'll trim fairly well. I'm going to knock some of the excess water off of here. And then once it's hung for a few seconds, I turn it around the other way. I, I don't like part of it to dry a lot more quickly than the other. All right, and then we go with the dope. Again, this is a 50-50 mix of nitrate. And some people just lay the, the wet silk span on the surface and just start painting through it. But I like to go ahead and put a fresh coat on really quick. This area is small enough that you can keep it wet while you're going. And that reminds me of something else I forgot to say last time. One of the motivations for putting the, uh, the initial coat, undercoat on all the surfaces, actually two motivations, is one, it seals the surface and it makes it so when you put the, the attaching coat of dope on, rather than soaking into the wood where it's not going to do a whole lot of good, it'll stay on the surface more and soak into the silk span where it will do more good. The other issue is that you probably know when the surface of raw wood gets wet, it tends to puff up and get rough. So by putting that sealing coat of dope on first, that helps seal the wood so when you put the wet covering on, it doesn't allow the wood underneath to puff up. So this is, this is kind of a, a quick operation. I like to go as quickly as possible. Just go in and hit, a, hit just a base coat. And we'll go back afterward and brush another coat right through the uh, silk span. Now this wing tip on the bottom, since the bottom is completely flat, is going to uh, be done in one piece. So that's safe. And then just take the silk span, lay it in place. Pull it tight. And unfortunately we've run out of time on this installment so because we're limited to 10 minutes so I'll do the other wing tip the next time around.